let's go ahead and put this up there on the screen, please. Uh, Fox News finding themselves embroiled in another defamation suit. This one, though, I think is pretty different. Uh, Arizona man, a.k.a. Ray Epps, who I think viewers of the show will long know, the Trump voter who was on tape multiple times urging people to, quote, go into the Capitol before January 6th and on the day of January 6th, is suing Fox News and specifically the Tucker Carlson Tonight Show for falsely naming him as a covert government agent who incited the January 6th attack. Now, the details of this case are actually very important because what Ray Epps is alleging is defamation and public harm that was done to him as a result of people who were uh, effectively harassing him and his family, which I do not condone and I do not think is correct, but apparently that's what happened after his name surfaced. He says that his wife and he received numerous death threats and were forced to sell their ranch and wedding business in Arizona and move to a mobile home in the mountains of Utah. Uh, the problem for him is that whenever he, well, his core allegation by the Tucker Carlson Tonight, by Revolver News and some of the people who aired the initial allegations against Ray Epps was, this man is on tape multiple times trying to get people to go into the cap. Mm -hmm. He has not yet been charged by federal authorities while QAnon Sham and all these other folks are, you know, not only in prison at this point, but fully gone through the judicial system. The reason why most people don't get charged is usually that they are federal informants. So the question is, was he a federal informant? Now, by focusing in on that, you know, by someone who was created and posted on wanted posters, that was part of the other, you know, curiosity about this case. Ray Epps was initially flagged as a core instigator of uh, some of the violence or going into the Capitol and then was taken off of FBI wanted posters afterwards, was what happened in this sudden change? You know, why was he taken off of these mm -hmm. posters? Why was he not charged? Well, interestingly enough though, in the uh, actual lawsuit, they, Mr. Epps claims, we don't know if this is true or not, that the Justice Department actually notified him they are planning to file criminal charges against him related to his role in the Capitol attack. Quote, details about the charges remain unknown, but the fact that they are being filed undermines the notion that Epps was being protected because of his role as a supposed covert agent. So effectively, their defamation revolves around the fact that he was falsely accused as an alleged government informant, government agent, whatever you want to call it, yeah. by Tucker Carlson tonight, you know, on the show in terms of that speculation. I personally think this is spurious and ridiculous, Crystal, uh, because number one, all it took is a single, like, first of all, Epps made himself a public figure. He's on video, and the FBI also made him one. So in terms of the private citizen defense, I think it's completely thrown out the window. And second, as long as you say alleged and you ask a question instead of a direct accusation, you're good. I mean, in terms of the court of law. That does not mean, though, that they may not settle. They very yeah, much could settle but uh, because they don't want to go through a trial. But personally, I think you should take this man's ass to trial because I want to know every single detail about these folks and actually get him in a uh, well, that an actual is, lawful deposition to I, see what's going on. Here. I think that's an actually important yeah. point. Yeah. Because if he was, like, you know, fed false flag instigator, mm -hmm. then I don't think he would be suing Fox News and opening himself up to discovery. So, Possible. and I, I also, so I, I asked, cause yeah. you know, I'm not a defamation right. lawyer, whatever. So I asked the guy, Mark Bankston, who was one of the top um, lawyers for the Sandy Hook families in their suit against Alex mm. Jones, which, you know, was very successful. And he said, and he told me I could say this on the record, quote, the liability case against Fox is extraordinarily strong. Fox broadcast statement saying Epps was, quote, the smoking gun of the Fed surrection. Mm -hmm. Not alleged, mm -hmm. not maybe, not I'm asking a question. The smoking gun of the Fed's erection. That's clearly defamatory, and it's easy to prove as false. Unlike in prior cases involving Tucker, it's not easy for Fox to defend this by saying it was only an opinion. They were unquestionably making factual assertions about Epps. The next thing he says Epps will have to prove is Fox's level of fault. If he was a public figure, he'd have to prove actual malice. But Epps is just one of 120,000 private citizens at the Capitol that day. He is not a public figure, so he only needs to prove Fox acting neg negligently under the law. That means Fox is liable if they fail to act as a reasonably prudent publisher would act. That is bad news for Fox. And then he goes on to say he'll have to prove that he has been damaged. And you know, yeah. I, I don't think I don't think that there's a problem there. So listen, what I ultimately think is going to happen is they're probably going to settle. They just yeah. settled with the. Uh, Tucker, former producer, right. who had alleged yeah. sexual harassment. Paid, paid I think she shot. got like $12 yeah. million, dollars, which for her is a lot. For Fox News, is nothing. Um, do you really think that they're going to want to open the kimono again 
and go through the whole process again that they went through with Dominion of all kinds of embarrassing correspondence and emails and text messages and what did this producer say and did they know that this was bullshit, et cetera, et cetera. Um, no, they're probably not going to want any of that happening. So I imagine they will probably settle here with Mr. Epps because I do think that he has a decent case. I did not realize that they had called him the smoking gun because, yeah, oh, I mean, we always do the same thing. You gotta say alleged. That's just one of the most basic, especially whenever you're talking about this. Public figure though, I really, you know, I think that on that one, just saying that you're one of 120,000, like that, that doesn't really pass scrutiny whenever he was literally on an FBI wanted poster and made himself a core part of it by shouting constantly on video video and knowing that he was being filmed at the time. So, I mean, we could quibble about this all day long. Is he an actor? No, you know, but at the same time, uh, I believe there have been multiple cases in the past where witnesses and participants in big events have been declared public figures after they later on tried to sue for defamation specifically like this. And the reason, but was that it's like, well, you know, even though it is no fault of your own, you became one whenever you became involved in the case. We'll see how it all plays out. As you said, though, the reason why I think the only reason he has a good case is reputationally, Murdoch and them, they just want to wash their hands yeah. of this. They don't want to deal with it anymore. So they're willing to pay somebody to shut up and walk away. They already paid out a billion dollars on this Dominion voting system. They just paid $12 million to this former Tucker producer. To them, you know, one of the reasons that they fired him was because they didn't want to deal with this stuff anymore. And to them, they want to walk away. So, you know, for them, he very much could get a very big payday uh, from him. So we'll see. Um, but, and reportedly, uh, Rupert Murdoch really hated the Tucker yes, January 6th stuff. I, I was gonna and, say, so Rupert in particular was very upset. Yeah, and so, I mean, the whole like, you know, Fed Surrection documentary, quote yeah. unquote, thing that Tucker did, apparently they didn't like. He was, what was he about to do, an interview with someone, or he was about to do some co additional commentary on that yes. just before he was fired. And then if you just look at the business piece, you know, he was named in the Dominion lawsuit. He's named in the Smartmatic lawsuit. His former producer was suing for sexual harassment. The Ray Epps thing was already hanging out there that they expected a lawsuit right. on that front as well. So, you know, when you start getting wrapped up in multi tens, hundred million dollar lawsuits, then the fact that you generate great ratings ends up being less consequential, especially because there were a lot of advertisers who um, would no longer place their ads during his program, so it becomes less financially lucrative. So you can sort of put all these pieces together and see why they were like, all right, we're done here. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, we'll, uh, we'll see how it plays out. Hey guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right, we're subscriber funded, we're building something new, we wanna replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So again, to subscribe, it's Breaking Points. Points.com.